All right, my first hint is draw a picture. In physics, drawing diagrams usually helps a lot when trying to solve problems. So I've drawn both a picture of what's happening and then a graph of motion, and I'm going to talk through both as my first hint. All right, the sketch here shows the two cars. At the moment, the speeder passes the resting police car. At this instant, uh, which we'll call t equals zero, so let's go ahead and say when they pass, that is time equals zero. Both the speeder and the police car are at the origin. So we're calling this point right here when the speeder passes the police car. That's going to be our origin for x and our origin for t, actually, because we said that's t equals zero. So that's our origin. Remember back to about a week ago, uh, setting up coordinate systems. In addition, we'll call the positive x direction the direction of motion, as shown here by the arrow pointing to the right. That's positive. Therefore, the speeder's initial velocity is positive 17.9 meters per second to the right. Sorry, positive and to the right are repetitive. And the police car's initial velocity is zero. Let's see, that's written here. The speeder's acceleration is zero, so he stays at a constant velocity. But the police car has an acceleration given by positive, or to the right, 4.51 meters per second squared. And then our plot shows the linear or diagonal line for the speeder. So the speeder is the red diagonal line. And what Fernando pointed out is the parabolic curve for the accelerating police car. So police car is the parabolic curve. And then at some point, they meet. So plotting a graph can be really helpful. In fact, it might be possible to just read off the answers from that graph. Don't do that. We're also going to confirm it mathematically. All right, now that you've drawn the picture, let's talk some strategy. First, make a position versus time equation for the police car. And let's call the police car's position at any time x sub p. So this will mean position of police. And then we're going to write a separate equation for the speeder. And we'll call the speeder's equation x sub s. And so from now on, that will mean position of the speeder. Okay. Now we want to find the time it takes the police car to catch the speeder by setting, and I'm going to move down to the bottom of the slide, xp equals xs. So whenever this statement is true, position uh, police car equals position speeder, the police car has caught the speeder. The one place that this would not be true is at 0 equals 0. So obviously at 0, the origin, the police car and the speeder are at the same place. That's not the answer we want. We want to know the next time they're at the same place. All right, and now we will take those two equations and solve for t. Once you find the time it takes for the police car to catch the speeder, it's very easy to calculate the distance traveled and the velocity of the police car. So what I'm going to leave you with in this hint is use this statement here. So this is what we're trying to find. Uh, use the equations on, let's see, we used them last night in the textbook. Use the equations on page 46, the constant motion with constant acceleration. Set up an equation for the police car and an equation for the speeder. Set them equal to each other and solve for t. I will show you how to do that in the next hint. You should try to do it by yourself first.